So we're going to get an update on how the economy is doing this morning. The latest GDP figures will be released 7 o'clock, what's it, half an hour's time. Now, the perfect place to be at this time in the morning is a bakery, and that is where Ben is at. Ben is at a bakery in Bolton. Good alliteration there. Um, and, oh, lovely. Pat <laughs> ben, he's got no buns with him, Ben. But um, beautiful um, pastries. They are beautiful, aren't they? Good time to be in a bakery at any time of day, but especially this morning. Look at how perfect these look. And, you know, as well they should, because this bakery has been going for 65 years. Welcome to Greenhouses in Horwich, just outside Bolton. Uh, they've seen some great economic times. They've seen some tougher economic times. Right now, they're all getting ready for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee weekend. Deborah putting some finishing touches to these cupcakes and some biscuits as well. They're all very excited about the Jubilee weekend coming up. I'll tell you what I'm very excited about, the GDP growth figures that we get uh, later this morning that tell us about the state and the health of the UK economy. Let me tell you why that is so important. GDP is the value of all the goods and services that we make and sell. What we're looking for is growth. Growth means more money, it, that means more jobs, that means more investment. It's a good thing generally. The best measure to give us an idea of the state of the economy is to compare it to what it was before the pandemic. Now, in April to June 2020, it took a significant hit. It shrank by 20% almost. And that was when lockdowns came in, businesses simply couldn't open. Then there was something of a recovery in the late summer and autumn of 2020 when the rules were relaxed. Growth was better than economists expected, but it was still not quite up there at pre-COVID levels. Since then, growth has continued, albeit at a slower pace. Below expectations, in the last three months of last year, it grew by just 1.3%. And in November, the economy was bigger at last than it was before the pandemic. All of the latest factors we've been talking a lot about, high food prices, high fuel prices, high energy costs, uncertainty, rising interest rates, all of that has an impact on our spending, which has a knock-on effect on the economy. That's why, all of that is why we're looking forward to seeing these figures uh, that give us an idea of how the economy is doing. Let's speak to uh, Gary, who is the uh, wholesale sales director here at Greenhouses. Gary, have you noticed um, as a company that people have a lot less to spend and all the impact that we've seen of the, the last couple of years? Yes, we, we found the, the customer spend slightly slowing down now. Um, we've, we've had to look at all our costings and where we can do on the raw ingredients coming in. Um, but we're trying to make advantage of things like the Queen's Jubilee, the Jubilee specials, uh, and World Cup's on in November this year. So we're trying to help people come out and spend, enjoy the the jubilation and do what we can for them. So we're doing biscuits, we're doing cupcakes, we're doing coloured rolls, all sorts for the, for the barbecues and things, really. OK. And when you hear that economists expect that the economy didn't perform outstandingly well, we're expecting growth, but not amazingly huge numbers, does that surprise you? Or as a business, is that comparative to what you're seeing? Yeah, it's, it's what we're seeing. We're, we're, we're trying to look for a new, new type of business to grow the business. But our standard standalone business, we're finding people are looking after the pennies um, and only buying quality, hopefully now. OK. And, and, and you've been here a long time. Have you seen economic times like this before or is this like nothing you've, you've been through? No, we've, we've had some good times, we've had some bad times over the years, uh, the flour shortage, the sugar shortage in, in the past years. Um, this is different because everything, unfortunately, tin foil, cardboard, film, everything is, is moving upwards. Um, sunflower oil, for example, we can't get all the sunflower oil now because rape seed oil is now coming in, but that's become more and more expensive. So everything we're trying to do, unfortunately, our costs have affected us. Yeah. How are you coping then? What are you doing to, to mitigate that? Um, we're trying to rationalise our lines. Um, so the small cell lines we're taking off, all the hand artisan lines we're trying to slow down on, mass produce where we can on automated lines and try and save some money on that side. Okay. And, um, I mean, if, if, if the Platinum Jubilee weekend, when that comes along... I, mean, I suppose that's double-edged for you because you've got to give people the extra time off. Yeah. But hopefully you'll see people out spending a bit more. That's yeah. We've got everything in the company's getting extra day off, um, so we're giving an extra day for the jubilee. Yeah. Um, but hopefully the spend will go up. So we're looking for a double-edged. The staff happy they've got a day off, and we'll hope they get double spend. So okay. it's it's a win-win. Hopefully. Okay. Gary, thank you very much. Deborah, can I just ask you what what are you going to do? Is you got the extra day off at the platinum weekend? What are you going to do with it? Well, probably party. Party, out <laughs> yeah. spending a bit. Yeah, spending a little bit and uh, getting 
all sorts of uh, just celebrating, product. getting yeah. together with friends and family. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. And um, I tell you what, you've done such a beautiful job of those. I see there's a spare icing bag. Um, I'm gonna. Can I? Can I? Can I just have a yeah, go? Sure. Is that all right? Do you mind yeah. grab this one? Um, I'm not going to try and do it. Let me just show me. Show, you do one, and I'll do one alongside you. Let's do this together. Start in the middle. Start in the middle. There we go. And go around like. And that. go around like that. I'm not sure what Charlie and Naga make of this effort, um, but I think it's pretty generous and. I'm very generous. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's just double the price on that one. Double the price on that one, I'm yeah, told. I think, Gary I said mean, to me I can take take home whatever I make. But you're, you're going to lose the money if, oh, if let's you finish get it off. that job, Ben, because you've put too much on, haven't you? Look at this. Well, I'm a generous kind of guy, Naga. Look at yeah, that. There I we don't, go. I don't think How's the profit that? margins will appreciate that. that. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, I mean... What can you what can you do? Just as well I'm not in charge of portions here. Indeed. Portion control, not Ben's forte. That's how it should be done. There we'll you have go. more later. Thanks so much, Ben. Let's bring you some news now. Just uh, at seven o'clock we learnt that the UK economy grew by 0.8% in the first quarter of this year. New figures have been released this morning. Yes, uh, Ben's got more for us now. Uh, ben, I know you're at a bakery this morning and everyone, one way or another, is affected by these figures. Just talk us through what we're hearing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And what we look for in the economy is pretty similar to what a, a baker looks for when they look in their oven window. They want to see growth. They want to see things getting bigger. And that's what this figure is all about. As you say, in the first three months of this year, the, the UK economy grew by 0.8%. That means that it's growing. It's getting bigger. There is more money. There is more investment. There are more jobs. That's the logic that follows. But... Uh, the problem is it's not growing as much as it did even in the last three months of last year. So that is why we talk about economic growth being a good thing, not uh, a, a huge number. Well, it's not so great. And um, because of the impact of various things like COVID, lockdowns, the war in Ukraine, the, all the experts think that the economic growth figure for the rest of the year will start to go down. It may, may even start to shrink. Let's get some analysis of this with uh, Kai Neufeld, who's an economist. Kai, what, what do you make of this figure? Yeah, so growth this quarter has come in slightly below expectations. Also, it's important to note that the majority of that growth actually happened in January, with the economy be basically being stagnant in February and March. And that is the start of the cost of living uh, crisis, that impact that we're starting to see, and we're expecting that to get worse over the coming quarters. OK, so 0.8% below economists' expectations, um, but, but it is still growth. It is still growth, yes, but the, the trajectory is clearly going down. So we had actually negative growth in March, and that's a, a really worrying sign there. OK, hi, for the moment, thank you very much indeed. Now, there are some glimmers, I suppose, for businesses like this. This one's been around for 65 years. They've seen good economic times. They've seen tough economic times. Things like the Platinum Jubilee weekend, which they're all gearing up for here. Uh, businesses like this and others around the UK will hope that Perhaps people will be out spending a bit more if they've got that money to spend, of course. Ben, for the moment, thank you. Good morning. It's Thursday the 12th of May. Now, we've learned in the last hour that the UK economy shrank in the month of March, and that follows growth stalling in February. The Office for National Statistics said the figures show the rising cost of living is beginning to bite. Ben's in Bolton uh, for more. Now, uh, so Ben, you're at a, a bakery today and every part of society uh, is going to feel this and uh, you're going to get a sense from people there about how it's going to affect business. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you look at how busy things are, you'd think uh, this is a picture of a, a very healthy economy. I mean, let me just talk through this one production line. The tea cakes being uh, taken from the oven, they're being wrapped up and packaged, they go along that line there, they get to that wheel that's turning, and we found out how the wheels of the economy are turning this morning. Let me run through some of the key numbers for you. GDP, that's the value of all the goods and services that we make and sell, uh, actually grew slightly in the first three months of this year by 0.8%. But that is less than economists were expecting. And when you drill down into the month-by-month -month figures, you notice that in March, the economy started to shrink. It shrank by 0.1%. And that doesn't bode well for the future. 
what economists are now saying is that we can expect the economy to slow down even more later in the year. Why is that? Well, combination of high food prices, high fuel costs, high energy bills, all of that is putting pressure on people's household budgets. It means people have less to spend and that puts less money into the economy. Why does that matter? Well, uh, 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 an economy that's growing, that has more money in it, means more jobs. It means more investment and that benefits all of us. So some really worrying red lights starting to flash for the economy. Let's find out what it means uh, and what we can read into those figures. We'll speak to, firstly to uh, Kai Neufeld, who's an economist. And Kai, that figure, uh, growth of 0.8%, it suggests the economy is growing, but, but not as much as people would want it to. No, exactly. Growth is roughly in line with our forecasts, but especially that monthly trend that we're seeing with uh, all of the growth happening actually in January and the economy stalling in February and contracting slightly in March, that's a worrying sign. So for, for people watching at home this morning thinking this is all really bigger picture stuff, this doesn't really affect day-to-day -day life, why does this matter to them? Well, in the economy, all parts are interlinked. So you have uh, governments, businesses and households. And if the economy is shrinking, that means at least one of those agents is spending less money. Uh, at the moment, the focus is really on the consumer with uh, the high inflation figures that you mentioned, which means that people have less money at the end of the day to spend. But that also, of course, affects businesses who have lower revenues. That means they could invest less. That means jobs could be put at risk, which in turn affects governments in terms of lower tax revenues. So it's all coming together. And that's why you know, we're worried about low growth or potentially a contraction. And the, um, the group that represents businesses in the UK, the British Chambers of Commerce, calling for some sort of emergency budget to, to deal with the cost of living pressures and the effect it's having on the economy. Uh, I mean, what, what sort of things do, would help? What sort of things do they want to see? What, what are they talking about? Yeah, I think there's a number of measures that could be taken. Uh, you know, you could increase benefits for the most vulnerable households. You could, you know, lower taxes. You could have direct grants, as we're seeing with the, um, with the energy bill already. So it's just kind of anything that helps with people, you know, uh, dealing with that cost of living crisis and increasing their income, which would, you know, help with the expenditure side. And that would also stimulate GDP in the coming quarters. OK, um, Kai, thank you very much. Kai Neufeld there. Um, let's find out how it's affecting this business in particular. We can speak to Gary, who's one of the company directors. Gary, um, when you look at the, the, the way people's spending habits are changing, the pressure it's putting on households, what patterns are you seeing in your business? People go, spending less in the shops? Spending a little bit less, but spending on quality. Um, it's the quality aspect we're trying to stick to. Isn't it? So people come back, enjoy it, and willing to spend that extra few coppers going okay. forward. OK, I'm just going to, uh, I know Pam's busy packing. Pam, can I just have a quick word with you? How are you finding cost of living at the moment? It's like everybody else, you're struggling at the minute because everything's going up, you know, all at once. And are you cutting back on little luxuries and but, things? Yeah, little things, yes. Yeah. Um, all right, OK, Pam, thank you very much. Um, and as you can see, you know, it's a busy morning here. Uh, they are getting the things packed up and ready. Charlie, Naga, um, I was hoping to grab um, a packet of tea cakes to bring back for you. The wheel is empty. The wheel, I'm afraid, is empty. So I can't bring anything back for you this morning. Sorry. Well, I'm sorry, Ben, but you've, you've iced... You've iced buns, you've um, shown us loads of croissants and pastries and cookies and biscuits. You're telling me that in the whole place you can't find two little bits to bring us back? Uh, do you know, I tell you what, I, I've just managed to uh, very skillfully uh, grab you a tea cake. How's that? How's that? It's tea lovely. Cake. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ben. You have to eat it. I'll bring it back. You're, you have to eat it, OK? 